Hi, welcome to End Credit Reviews on episode of After the Credits on End Credit Reviews. It's just me, Tyler, this time from End Credit Reviews, and I just saw the movie Dark Phoenix, or as I personally think it should be called, X-Men Dark Phoenix, okay? Why did they drop X-Men from the title? Is this studio embarrassed of how many X-Men movies they've made? But I digress. So anyway, this is apparently the final chapter in the X-Men franchise, or I don't know, there's a whole New Mutants movie they keep delaying, and I'm like, is that a part of it, or whatever. I mean, a lot of people obviously are not that interested in this franchise anymore, because when I went to go see this movie on Saturday night at 7 at, in the evening, or at nighttime, where everyone want to split hairs about that, there are only about 10 people in that auditorium, including myself. So Dark Phoenix is about the X-Men are now in the 1990s, in 1992 to be specific, and they're going on various missions, and there's an American space shuttle that's got out of control in outer space, so they go up to save the astronauts, but then there's this whole anomaly in outer space that happens, and gets sucked into Jean Grey, who is played by Sophie Turner, and she becomes powerful and yet out of control with her powers and that. And the thing is that I have seen the X-Men 90s, the animated series, and yeah, like The Last Stand, they do kind of drop the ball on this one. Not as hard as The Last Stand, but they kind of did. And I can understand why people are not liking this movie. There are definitely problems with it, but I thought of myself, you know, was it really that bad? I mean, I'm not trying to excuse the problems with this movie whatsoever. And it's not just because of the fact that I have seen every single X-Men movie in theaters. Ever since I was a kid, seeing the first one back in 2000, at the time when no one knew who Hugh Jackman was. But I gotta say, this one is definitely in the lower end of the X-Men movies. I mean, I don't think it's the worst X-Men movie, because I still think that Origins Wolverine is worse with its very cartoony looking CGI and what they did to Deadpool. Or The Last Stand that was very lopsided tonally, where one scene we would see like a death of a character, it was so dramatic, and then we cut to another scene where Wolverine is kicking someone in the nuts. But anyway, so there's a lot of drama in this one, and... It definitely, tonally wise, it was more focused, which I'll give them that. However, the movie in a way did feel very short, and I'm like, this is the third act of the movie? It kind of feels underwhelming, especially for the fact of the matter, it's been marketed as the final chapter in this saga. I know people have a problem with Apocalypse, but in retrospect, Apocalypse should have been the last one because that was big. And while that movie did have its problems, that third act of that movie did feel like a worthwhile climax. Okay, so anyway, so another problem I have with this movie is there's this one scene, you probably saw it online, but Jennifer Lawrence's character as Raven, aka Mystique, she's kind of butting heads with Professor X and she's making some good points in that. And then at the last line that she has, which was probably, you know, improv by her anyways, like, oh, look how many times that the women have saved the men on this team. It should be called X-Women. And internally, in my own mind, body and soul, I was going, Ugh. I'm just so sick and tired of identity politics being shoved into mainstream movies. There's this one character in the movie, it's a mild spoiler, but we have um, Quicksilver, who's played by Evan Peters again. He's one of my favorite characters, and I was disappointed that he lacked any screen time. Now, he doesn't get killed off in the movie, you know, mild spoiler, but the thing is that when he does his, like, you know, speed thing, it was like, that's all it was, just a little bit of that, because in the other X-Men movies, where we saw, like, him doing his speed thing, in Days of Future Past, we heard, like, a song from the 1970s. And in Apocalypse, when he was saving the mansion, we had a song from like the 80s, like, you know, Sweet Dreams, that song. With it taking place in the 1990s, you would expect they would have done some song they would have played. I mean, even a Nirvana song, which would have been way too damn easy and obvious, they should have just at least done that. I mean, this movie, 
Another problem I have with this movie is that it's supposed to take place in 1992, but it doesn't really feel like the 1990s. If you look at the other X-Men movies that took place in the past and were period piece movies, if you watch First Class, that movie did feel like and look like it was from the 1960s. Same for Days of Future Past by being in the 1970s, and also X-Men Apocalypse by taking place in the 1980s, so I was looking forward to them taking place in the 1990s because when it comes to period piece movies, the 1990s are just barely touched. Also, we have the villain of the movie who's played by Jessica Chastain. I guess her character is Vuk from the comics, and I had to look that character up, and I don't understand why they made her blonde like an albino. It just looked weird and that but anyway I'm not trying to go on the hate parade about trying to just hate on this movie now what I did forget to bring up in the beginning of the movie is this movie was plagued with so many rumors that Fox was not going to release this movie and I knew that was completely false because the thing is that no studio in their right mind is gonna shelve a movie this expensive, especially an established franchise like X-Men. I can understand like shelving like a low budget movie that costs like $10 million or something like that until maybe one of the actors that was in the movie later becomes a bigger actor and then they release it like, oh, this guy is big, let's see, release this movie. You know, we were shelving for years. I can understand that, but the thing is that this movie, especially one that costs more than $100 million to make, a studio is not gonna shelve it. All right, so back on track. So what did I like about this movie? So what I liked about it was there was some good drama between characters. I did like how there were some butting heads between Beast, who's played by Nicholas Holt, as well as Professor X, played by James McAvoy. I also did like they finally got to the Genosha kind of area, even though it's kind of just an island somewhere in the American coast. It's not really an island that Magneto made specifically of metal that we saw in the comics or really an asteroid or whatever. And yeah, again, I do like seeing Michael Fassbender as Magneto. He is my favorite character in this series, not just because Michael Fassbender is a great actor, but also he is a character that is very well written, you can understand his motives of his history in that, but also he's very powerful and that's pretty cool. But yeah, there's definitely some inconsistencies when it comes to the timeline stuff. For example, I mean, Magneto was supposed to be very powerful because in Apocalypse, he was like juiced up by Apocalypse so he could control like all the metal in the world but I guess he d he's not that powerful now in this one. Also, remember Psylocke in Apocalypse? Like, oh, I'm gonna return, she gave that look. Yeah, she's not in this movie. I mean, at least with Olivia Munn, she did give an interview explaining why she is not in this one. It was because she was busy working on the Predator, so okay, that makes sense. Now, one character that I noticed has like a cameo appearance, I'm like, oh, okay, that character showed up, was Dazzler, who's played by Halston Sage. I'm not so sure if I'm saying that name right, but anyway, I mean, this character was rumored to appear in various X-Men movies for a long time now. So when I saw her on screen just briefly, I'm like, okay, they finally got to her and got that out of the way. There's that scene where they're showing her doing her outdoor like performance to like the people at the mansion and there's a one part where some guy's head gets in the way for the majority of the shot while we're trying to focus on this character and for me it was like that just really comes off as novice directing. I'm gonna get into spoilers now so you have been warned just fast forward to this part if you don't want to be spoiled. Anyway so the third act of the movie was very disappointing because I'm like, this is the third act of the movie because I'm like, that is the third act because there's this one part in the movie, they're on this train and I'm thinking to myself, this really does feel like the middle of the movie, but it's not. And there are some cool moments that happen in the movie, but at the same time, I'm like, this is the ending. I realized that in the back of my mind while I was watching this movie, and I thought to myself, okay, that's where they're going to end it. This is supposed to be the final capping moment of it. I mean, again, I know Apocalypse had its problems, but in retrospect, that should have been the last one. There are just, again, some mild other problems with it, and how Jessica Chastain's character is defeated, I'm like, 
okay, that was a little bit cliche, underwhelming, and that sort of deal. And then also with the X-Men character that gets killed off, I thought it was going to be Quicksilver. However, it was actually Mystique. And after hearing her, like, line of, oh, it should be changed to X-Women and that, I was like... Another good thing I'll say about this movie is that the effects are actually really good. Like, I know it's pretty cliche these days to say, like, oh, the effects are good for, like, a big-budget movie, but they were very impressive. It was rare in this movie where I felt like, yeah, that was some pretty obvious-looking CGI, but a lot of the effects were very impressive, so at least the people who worked on the effects in this movie did a good job with that, but... Also, the part that they decided to change the name of the school from Xavier School to Jean Grey School, I was like, okay, really, people? Alright, so as for X-Men Dark Phoenix, and yes, I know it's called Dark Phoenix, but screw it, it should be called X-Men Dark Phoenix. Yes, it is a letdown. It feels very underwhelming for being the final movie in the franchise, but the thing is, the movie isn't the worst X-Men movie, but I do consider it one of the weakest installments of the X-Men franchise, and it's really disappointing that the franchise had to just end like this. So as for X-Men Dark Phoenix, I would give it about two to two and a half stars out of four. So anyway, this is Tyler from End Credit Reviews, and I hope you enjoyed this episode of After the Credits on End Credit Reviews, and I hope to make a lot more in the future. Please like and subscribe.